wind gust of nearly 100 miles an hour was recorded today in the Highlands. There are 33 flood warnings in place in Scotland currently. Rail services have been disrupted. And in Northern Ireland, it's had an impact. Very high winds there too. Roads closed, some roads closed due to fallen trees. And Apart from the storm warning, it's nice and bright and it's reasonably mild enough that I think I'm going to try camping this weekend. So I've looked up park for night. There's a couple of sites that might do. One of them's out towards Inveruri direction, um, just somewhere between Dice and Hatton of Fintry. So I'm going to go and have a look and see what I can find. See if it's there. See if it's any good. The only thing is, obviously, with there being a weather warning, I don't really want to park up next to a bunch of trees just in case. So we'll see what I like when we get there. I'd had this idea in my head on where I could park up for the night. Somewhere out of the way, somewhere off the road. And honestly, I just couldn't find it. I was looking, I was driving around in circles for what felt like hours on end. And eventually, I just had to admit defeat. The only thing I could find, and I did find a few of them, were potholes. I'm going to be amazed if there's anything left of my van suspension by the time I'm done. This road is horrific. I mean, <laughs> honestly, it's just like driving on the moon. Um, the worst is the sun's set, so it's going to get dark any minute now. And I still haven't managed to find this car park that was on park for night. This, yeah, this, this better be worth it, I'm telling you. Because if this doesn't work, it's back into town to my backup plan. So, oh god. This is not looking good. I don't know how many times I drove round and round and round, but I can't find that spot that was on park for night, so I've given up. I've got one more place to try before it gets dark, so I'm gonna have to hope I make it there in time. But I have somewhere in mind. And just in case you're worrying, you know, you got out to stealth camp in the middle of a storm, I've dressed appropriately. Being in Scotland, we know how to deal with this. I've got a jumper and a jacket. I'm ready. So plan B, my backup plan, was basically to head back into town and park up at the Bay and Egg. Now the Tory battery has become even more popular lately thanks to the Greyhawk project, but more about that later. I think this will do. <laughs> now when I pulled up, I managed to sneak into one of the best parking spots. Alright, so where I've stopped isn't exactly stealth, there's a few other camper vans and things here, but I'm definitely the only tiny camper, so I'll show you the sights in the morning, it's a wee bit, wee bit late to really go and see anything just now, but I'm set up, I've got my new LEDs in, take a little while to get going, I'm going to go and chill out, because it's been a, it's been a long day, I finished work, jumped in the van, pretty much came straight out, so I'm going to go and chill out, I'll show you more in the morning. Surprisingly, I did manage to get some sleep. Morning.
Now, once I felt a little bit more awake, I wandered round to the battery up to Grey Hope to see if I could grab myself a coffee. Morning. Despite being so early, there were quite a few folk out already. Some were even trying to do an 18 hole at Balnagask. I was sitting thinking they're mad, and then I kind of stopped and realised I'd just spent the night here. Like I said, I definitely wasn't the only one. There's still a lovely peacefulness about here. Except, of course, for the howling wind. So we used to come to the battery a lot as kids. I remember watching the tall ships race here the last time they visited back in 1997. The batteries overlooked the bay since about 1860. But it was decommissioned around a century later, not long after the end of the Second World War. And this is pretty much how it's remained ever since. But there are some new lodgers at the battery. I'm kind of disappointed I wanted the drone out to play, but it's not coming out today. I'm also disappointed, you know, the battery's one of these places that should never really have been allowed to go to rack and ruin like it has. It looks over the bay, it's defended the city in two world wars, and then the second that was done, Solomon might as well shut it, mate. So there's been talk over the years of turning it into some kind of visitor attraction, like a tourist spot. Great Hope Bay's kind of started that ball rolling. I swear, you couldn't make this up. A few days after I visited, the team at Grey Hope Bay announced plans for expansion. At the moment, they have a coffee shop come community area. The only downside is if anyone's booked the space, the coffee shop has to shut to the public. So what they're going to do is expand the coffee shop, build new exhibition space, and try and build an outdoor market, which I think is pretty ambitious. So this is the site as it stands. It's a great vantage point if you want to go dolphin spotting or if you just want to hide away from the weather and warm up after a walk around the Bay and Egg. And if the plans do get the go ahead, I honestly think this is gonna be brilliant for Tori and the city in general. Along the south wall of the battery, they hope to build an outdoor market for small independent traders and the old guardhouse, just as you come through, that's going to get rebuilt as a sort of exhibition space. I know this is going to be quite divisive, it's not going to be everyone's cup of tea, but I can't help but think this is exactly what the area's need. Honestly, I think this is going to be brilliant for tourism. Like I said, I know the plans aren't going to be for everyone, but personally, I'm looking forward to seeing some new ideas being brought about rather than letting it get in an even worse state than it already is. Who knows? I might even be able to pop up and have a coffee when the tall ships return next year. 